mangonda rozi kitunda ja imekuinda mtasi tunalunda hayo kusaka unga vibarua tunalunga unga nusu shilingi 100 nyumbani watumia watoto wanalia wameshindwa kuvumilia ja imewakalia kweli mtawahurumia nataka kuwagusia watu wenye njema nia tutawakushia kida na magunia kwa nini tunalala nja kwa nini tunahangaika maskini na maskini somewhere on the outskirts of Nairobi a confusing metropolis that is growing rapidly. People buy their food from small market stalls which might be there one day and disappear again overnight. Where the food comes from is hard to understand. The same applies for knowing whether the food is healthy. The price must be right and the product should look good. That's what matters here. <laughs> Kenyan expert Daniel Maingi of the Kenyan Food Alliance is suspicious. He believes that farmers are ready to use pesticides unrestrained in order to produce as much as possible and as cheaply as possible. And that the profit-oriented agricultural and chemical industry exploits this shamelessly. He wants clarity. We bought some uh, vegetables today. Uh, they're looking good, but uh, the, because it's an open market and the sources are not very clear, I really want to know what chemicals are on all these uh, produce. And so I'm going to use the local institutions to try and test this uh, produce to see what's on it. Daniel's worries are not unfounded. Every year, up to 41 million people are poisoned by pesticides, in many cases with fatalities. The great part of the victims come from developing countries. And in Kenya, the chemical companies are continuing to attack. Agro shops in rural areas are now running a colorful assortment of products, extolling a poisonous cocktail for every problem. Problems such as the Fallami worm, which cause nowadays such large crop losses that they are considered a national disaster. In Kenya, around 70% of the population live as small scale farmers who manage an average land area of less than one acre. Modern equipment such as tractors, silos, and harvesters can be affordable only by a few. With the backing of the government, the industry is trying to bring small-scale farmers into chemical agriculture and convince them of the benefits of modern seeds, modern crop protection and fertilizers. For them, people are a billion-dollar sales market. Daniel Maingi is watching the lobbying of the chemical industry in Kenya critically. In his view, it is high time to create a counter-movement. He wants to start with the consumers by showing them the dangers they are exposed to by the industry. He hopes that consumers will be able to change course in agriculture, as in Germany, where the market of the agrochemicals is now getting smaller and smaller. That's why he brings vegetables bought at street markets to the University of Nairobi, where they are testing pesticide residues that are hazardous to them. Thank you. I see you have something for us. We have some samples that we bought from the market. Yes. So we want to ask that the Department of Public Health it helps us check them. Yeah and whether there are any, they may have any harm to our health. Okay, let me see what the... The issue of food safety in Kenya is beginning to become important. We've had issues 
of consumers and uh, farmers, small-scale farmers, who are badly affected. They have various forms of cancers. They have a lot of allergies that are developing, that are cropping up. And that effect has actually skyrocketed. So why do you want us to analyze food? As a Food Alliance Network of Kenya, we said, uh, let's begin to look at this from an evidence-based uh, approach. Let's approach the Department of Public Health, Pharmacology, Toxicology, to help us test. And we hope maybe we'll be able to go back now to the consumers and the farmers and create awareness. The threat is three. These chemicals have been associated with so many adverse effects, which uh, the public may not be aware. So keep it up and we will promise to collaborate with you. I think it has brought us to the question of what is this business that we are doing, allowing so much chemicals to be sprayed on our vegetables, our fruits, our tomatoes, everything. And what exactly is the effect that is happening, that, is, um, that we are pushing onto the people and onto the environment. How dangerous are the pesticides that are sold in Kenya? Silk Bolmo is an environmental scientist that has been living in Nairobi for several years. She took a closer look at the registered products within Kenya and came across shocking results. She has found around 700 agricultural pesticides that are imported from around the world. Over a quarter would be illegal in Europe because of their active ingredients. The 173 products from Bayer, Syngenta, and BASF are no exception. Every third pesticide from Europe would be banned there. Silk is worried about the fact that those companies deliberately enter markets where there are no protection programs. Es gibt keine, um, keine monitoring programme für Flüsse, für Böden, für Bienen, für Insekten, so wie es äh, Langzeitmonitoringprogramme, so wie es die in Europa gibt. Ähm, das heißt, wir wissen gar nicht, ob wir vor einem Umweltproblem stehen oder nicht, weil wenig Daten aufgenommen werden und gerade auch im Wasserbereich wenig Daten aufgenommen werden, wenige Pestizidanalysen durchgeführt werden, es gibt wenig Labore, die Analysen sind zu teuer und wieder, es gibt kein Bewusstsein dafür, weder von der Regierung noch von der Bevölkerung. Critics call this self strategy a double standard based on the double morality that underlies it. While the dangers of cancer, damage to aquatic organisms or bees are too great for Europe's own market, European law allows these poisons to be sold to other countries outside the European Union. And the corporations are happy to use it. Upon request, Bayer states that European Union bans are not relevant for export to Kenya, as they target OECD countries. Bayer only sells products registered in an OECD country. Translated, this means that the weakest standard of any of these 36 countries is evident in exports to Kenya. Depending on the policy and country, the individual product bans vary. However, export to Kenya does not have to be stopped until there is a ban in all 36 OECD countries a very weak protection for the African market. This is also confirmed in a study published by the Pesticide Action Network in 2014. The number of active substances withdrawn from the market in the OECD member states varies greatly and they did not find one that is simultaneously banned in all countries. When we uns jetzt den Hersteller Syngenta anschauen, Man hat die Produkte Fusilat, ähm, Aztelic Super und so weiter, Pegasus und hier die verschiedenen Wirkstoffe. Und hier sieht man all die Wirkstoffe, die eben nicht auf dem europäischen Markt sind und von Syngenta ähm, registriert wurden hier in diesem Land. 
The Syngenta product Actelic Super that Silk speaks about shows the double standard. U.S. authorities have categorized permethrin as potentially carcinogenic and it has been withdrawn from the European market because it is highly toxic to fish and bees. The active ingredient has been banned since 2007, even in Switzerland, the country where it is produced. But for Kenyan farmers like Lydia, Actelic Super is still very popular. It protects farmers' crops against pests and larvae. Unfortunately, there are serious side effects. After you have, you have applied the, the powder, you don't just start consuming immediately. You have to wait for about two months or even more before you start consuming. So, so that the, that, that powder, the, the, the strength, don't affect you so much. But if you just use immediately, you have some side effects on your body or in the stomach. Pesticides from many different countries are piled up on the shelves of village agricultural shops. It's about bare products like antracol, basta, or milras. It concerns BASF products such as Kada or Syngenta products such as Primagram. Primagram has an active ingredient in it called atrazine, which has been banned in Germany since 1991 and in Switzerland since 2007. It's not just a single product, an exception or mistake. One could guess a deliberate strategy, at least from the outside. A strategy to make profit out of old and dangerous products. We, as the Food Alliance, are concerned very much when we find um, big corporations be they Sigenta, Bayer, Monsanto, or Pioneer, are making products for this market, yet those products are not acceptable in Europe, in the US. Why would such a big corporation be silent on what products are ending up with the consumers in Kenya, whereas they're not acceptable in Europe? In order to reach small farmers with chemical products, the agribusiness industry organizes large exhibition events. Farmers are brought from rural areas by bus. They come in the hope to buy products for faster and more successful agriculture. With dance performances, the big producers like Bayer or Syngenta create a show and then bring poisons to the farmers. The exhibitors from Bayer are also convinced of their products. Their message is clear. The user does not have to worry about safety. You make sure also the product you are bringing is safe to the environment in the sense that it doesn't interfere with any other living creature in the environment. If you are targeting insect, let it be the target insect, and we make sure the product is registered and the farmer is aware and uses it in the right way. Daniel from the Kenya Food Alliance has also found his way to the exhibition to get an idea of what products the corporations are promoting. There are many different product solutions to the problem, but often with highly toxic agents. When you see those chemical companies competing for the attention of the farmers, it's very interesting because one has one solution, another one has uh, multiple solutions for that same problem. Unfortunately, what you're not seeing is farmers who are talking about alternative methods. It's all about selling and selling solutions for the same problem. So far, the companies generate less than 6% of their global pesticide sales in African agriculture. This means there are huge profit opportunities on the continent, and it looks good for them. In Kenya alone, the import of pesticides has quadrupled in the last 15 years. And for sure, Bayer promises to bring the best and most modern products to market. 
innovation is very key for us right now as buyers as a company, bringing in something new that can offer solution to the farmer. Modern products, you could see it differently. Many active ingredients such as the pesticides Roundup, Milras or Senko presented at the exhibition date back to the 1970s and their licenses are highly criticized in the European market. Ein US-Gericht hat die Bayer-Tochter Monsanto zu Schmerzensgeld verurteilt, weil ihr glyphosathaltiges Unkrautvernichtungsmittel Roundup Krebs verursacht haben soll. Bayer shares plunged earlier by the most in 15 years. Investors weighing the potential costs of a protracted legal battle after newly acquired Monsanto was hit with 289 million dollars in damages. The case was filed back in 2016 when Mr. Johnson alleged that Monsanto's weed killers caused him non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now a judge expedited the case due to the severity of his illness and Johnson has only a few months to live. In the USA, Johnson is one of thousands of people suffering from cancer who have worked with the pesticide called glyphosate. In Europe, there is a constant dispute over a ban. There is little similar debate happening in Kenya. Glyphosate is an absolute bestseller. The active ingredient is contained in 68 products including, among others, in the product Roundup from Bayer and Touchdown from Syngenta. Industry-related studies indicate that, with proper protection, there is no danger despite concerns that have been voiced about the risks of involved. The product references themselves do not indicate any risk of cancer as well as glyphosate is only classified as slightly dangerous, characterized by a green level. Joseph has participated in an intensive training offered by the ministry. Since then, he is an educated sprayer. He often gets assigned by other villagers to bring also the herbicide glyphosate for weed killing onto the fields. Previously, the weeds were plucked out manually. Despite having good training, which he is very proud of, Joseph does not protect himself. He wears no gloves, no breathing mask, no rubber boots. Whether it's the lack of access to protective gear, lack of money, or people's lack of understanding, you rarely see anyone protecting themselves. In addition, there is very poor public health care in the region and early cancer diagnosis in remote rural areas is far from people's minds and capacity. Joseph visits the neighboring typical health resort for a checkup of his health situation. Since you have been spraying, mm. have you been having any problem uh, with the skin, with the nose, your breathing system? You know, it depends on the kind of uh, chemicals that are uh, being applied. Yeah. Uh, some can be very toxic, uh -huh. like the one for controls of ticks. Were you having a mask? No, and in Sedena I never used it. You did not use mask? Yeah. Not only does the sprayer expose himself to the toxic dangers of the products, the whole family is affected. Especially in small older regions, the cultivated fields are right next to the family houses. The fields are often so small that no minimum distance for the protection of the family or running waters envisaged by the industry can be maintained. And when they the information, hätten, wäre es wahrscheinlich auch sehr schwierig, für einen Kleinbauern 25 Meter Randstreifen einzuhalten, wenn man eh nur ein Hektar Land hat. Also schon schwierig, diese Anwendungshinweise einerseits einzuhalten unter den lokalen oder nationalen Bedingungen hier in Kenia. Und teilweise ist diese Information aber auch gar nicht vorhanden. The risk for pregnant women is particularly high when they live in regions where insecticides are used. 
In the US, it has been observed over a period of 20 years that numerous premature births occurred in these areas and that children often add a lower indication of intelligence. The product compound chlorpyrifos is particularly dramatic. The likelihood for children to be born with autism triples in areas where it is applied. The poison was banned in Germany in 2009 for general usage. In Kenya, 28 products are registered with exactly this active ingredient, including the product Bulldog Star from Bayer. Is it, are you having a wife? One yeah. or two? Hmm? One, one wife. Is she still uh, reproductive? Yes. When she's pregnant, hmm. or when she's breastfeeding a small hmm. child, she hmm. should not go near this kind of work. Yeah, I don't even normally entertain her. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then also, hmm. even small children hmm. should not go, and the, the store where you keep those medicines hmm. must be away a distance hmm. from the house where you Yes. Mm. Uh, you that's good, sister. You see, even we had a precaution upside that uh, when we were on the college, that uh, when research was done uh, at the uh, central region, mm. most matters had developed breast cancer because, because of, of that. The use of uh, the, the, the very much rampant use of uh, chemicals. <laughs> Daniel picks up the results from his vegetables and is disappointed with the few options for analysis. Although the monitor shows many pigs, only a few can be named. The lab has too little reference material to detect all drugs. Therefore, he can't find and approve if the pesticide residues could play a critical role on the high increase of cancer cases within the country or even as case numbers doubled in the last five years. But what is found in his vegetables worries him anyway. So when we analyzed, some compounds could not be detected, but at least we managed to identify one, alpha BHC, which uh, is shown in the chromatogram. What group of uh, pesticide would that it be? Is, it belongs to the organocronin group. Organocronin. Yeah, okay. the organocronin is where we have the famous DDT. Wow. DDT has been banned from agricultural use in Kenya since 1986. Nevertheless, studies conducted on Lake Victoria show high levels of the active substance in water and soil 30 years later on. This shows, on one hand, that late effects of pesticides can still occur decades later. And on the other hand, it indicates how long products persevere before they disappear from the global market after being banned. It's particularly unsafe in countries like Kenya when corporations ignore recognized threats to the environment, animals and people, and greedy of gaining financial profits turn to countries where there are few consumer and environmental protections in place like there are in Europe.